Hello, Jordan here from Artisan Electrics, and today I'm going to show you how to install a Nest dual thermostat system for a house where you've got two heating zones. So often now in modern houses you'll have two heating zones, one for upstairs and one for downstairs, and in that case you do need to have two Nest thermostats if you want to be able to control those two zones. So what I'm doing today is installing these Nest third generation learning thermostats. Um, Nest is now Google Nest because Google's taken over uh, Nest and started to brand it with their own branding. But it's the same product as before. And I'm installing the black ones today, which is quite nice. I've never installed these before. Usually I go for the stainless steel ones, but I think the black ones look really, really smart. The current setup here is we've got a, a, a main programmer here for the, for the house. Um, and then we've got two thermostats. It's a combi boiler. So this is the combi boiler that we've got. It's a Potterton um, Promax SL boiler. It's from 2013. This is a kind of a fairly newly built house. And in the hallway here, you've got the downstairs thermostat zone. So this is a Siemens thermostat for the downstairs heating. Um, it's just a basically semi-detached house, um, two bedroom. So it's quite a small little house really, but um, upstairs, as I say, you've got two bedrooms and you've got another thermostat controller here, which does the upstairs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a wall mounted nest on here and downstairs we're gonna actually put a um, stand um, so that the customer can have the thermostat in their living room rather than in the hallway, which is kind of a bit pointless really because you don't wanna just heat your hallway up. The main heating cupboard is in here. So I'll show you that. So we've got our big, nice big hot water tank and we've got obviously an immersion heater as a backup, but that's not in use. This is the main switch fuse connection unit for the heating system. We've got two zone valves there. And then under here is what we call the um, wiring center for the central heating. That's basically where all the cabling comes in and out for the various controls and everything's connected up together there. So I'm gonna take the wiring center cover off, I'm gonna take all the thermostat covers off as well and just see how it's been wired and then that will help me to know how I can wire up the Nest system because it, it depends. Sometimes we put the Nest um, heat links here next to the wiring center if that is possible but sometimes we have to actually put them where the old um, wall uh, room thermostats are. So I'm gonna just take everything off and have a look. Something important to note is whenever you take the covers off things, obviously you need to make sure that there's no power to them first. So carrying out safe isolation procedure is very important. And you can do that by obviously turning off the switch for the central heating system and then using a GS38 approved voltage tester to make sure that it's dead. And you do need to test this before and after on a known source of electricity to make sure that your tester is actually working correctly. So I will be following safe isolation procedure. Um, another thing to remember is that you should never um, just switch it off if there's somebody else around who could turn it back on again. So what you might want to do, for example, is pull out the main, the fuse here and put the fuse in your pocket so that even if somebody else was wandering around and they turned it back on, you're not gonna get an electric shock when you're working on it. So I'm gonna take the cover off this and the other thermostats and show you what I find. Right, so it looks like this is our main programmer just for the for the hot water it's ba it's got two switch outputs so um, four and three but only four is actually actually in use and that's the gray wire 
which presumably goes up to the wiring center. So I need to check what that gray wire does, but I'm pretty sure that this one is just doing the hot water and that the other room thermostats do the switching for the central heating themselves. In here, you've got the neutral terminal, permanent live, which is linked across to terminal two. And then from terminal two, permanent live goes um, out. And then you've got terminal four, which is the switch live, which turns off whatever it's switching, which presumably is to produce hot water. So I'm gonna check the thermostats for the actual rooms now and see what we've got there. So these controllers, you just push the little lever in down there and it slides up. And then there's a little wiring cover, which just leaves up like that. So we can see here, it does look like it's three core and earth cable coming in, but they've just removed the third core and put it in a connector block. This one itself is going to be just gone. So we're going to put this just in connectors, make it safe and disconnect it at the other end because we're going to be putting the Nest thermostat on a stand. So I would imagine that this goes back to the wiring center, which means that we can actually install our heat links at the wiring center, which will be good. So in terms of how the existing thermostat works, as you can see on the diagram here, you've got L, L1 and L2. So L2 is normally closed. That's, that's this one. L1 is normally open. So that, what that means is under normal conditions, uh, the permanent live terminal is switched onto this one, L2. When the system wants to call for heat, it switches across to L1. So now you've got contact between this terminal and this terminal, which means that the permanent live power comes then out and down, back down this black wire, which should actually be identified as being a live conductor by some brown sleeving, but that's a minor issue. Um, then that wire goes back to the wiring center and does whatever the system needs it to do to call for heat. Usually that involves opening the zone valve and turning on the pump. So as I say, this one, we can just remove it, disconnect this cable at the other end. So we'll have to do some tests to measure to make sure we find this correct cable and we'll disconnect it at both ends to make it safe. And then the customer will just have to fill in the wall afterwards. So we're now upstairs and this is the programmer for the upstairs heating. And I would imagine that it's exactly the same setup. Basically, yeah, so we've got a three core and earth cable, two cores of which are in use, permanent live and switch live. So what we can do with this one, because we want to wall mount the Nest thermostat, we can actually uh, reuse this existing cable, but connect it to the 12 volt terminals of the Nest thermostat, uh, the heat link, so that this then connects to the back of the Nest wall mounted thermostat and uh, gives it the power that it needs to work. So again, I'm gonna remove this old one and then I'm going to wall mount the Nest thermostat, connect it up, but you should never connect it to mains voltage, which this is at the moment, otherwise it will blow up the Nest thermostat. You need to change the wiring at the other end of this cable to connect it into the Nest heat link in the correct terminal. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, whenever you take anything like this off, it's always good to take a photo before you take it off, just so that you know how it was wired before. And then if you do need to put anything back together later on, you've got a record of how it was wired originally. So I would always do that with any, before you make any changes, take a photo of what's there originally first, just for your records. They're always in awkward positions, these kind of things. So. I'm sometimes at a dilemma what to do, whether to actually remove this shelving unit just to make it easier for me to get in there and work or whether to just leave it in place and try and work around it. But it's gonna be quite tight to get my head in there. All right, that's better. It's a bit easier to get in there now. 
so we'll take the wiring center cover off see what we've got in here lots of wires so at first glance a wiring center can seem quite complicated and you could think oh my goodness that's like a complete snake's wedding of wires a rat's nest um, where do I start well this is where you start when you take the cover off on the back of the cover you've got the termination uh, numbering system and this makes it so much easier so basically it starts at the top here number one and then it works its way down if they have used the correct system to actually wire it up so we have to check that and in this case I'm not sure if they have used the correct numbering system Number one looks like an earth cable. Two and three also look like earth cables. But here it says call and common from the room stat. So, hmm, gonna have to do some investigation on that. So on further investigation, I can see that they've clearly completely ignored the actual uh, layout diagram on here and they've just done what they wanted. But, because of the colors of the wiring and various other things, it is fairly easy to figure out what's what. And of course you can confirm that by testing. So remember down in the kitchen, we had a gray wire going out from the programmer so that when the programmer calls for hot water, it sends power down that gray wire. Well, that's this one here. So that basically comes into here and then this brown flex goes out to the cylinder thermostat so in the cylinder in here there's a thermostat and that's this cable that goes in here basically the cylinder stat is like a switch so when the cylinder temperature reaches a certain level the switch will open and it will stop the system calling from heat when the temperature is below the required level, it will close and the system will call for heat. So that's a way of maintaining the correct temperature of the hot water within the cylinder because the boiler only sends out water at a certain temperature. So you can see these are the two wires going to the cylinder stat, permanent live going to the cylinder stat and then the switch live coming back from the cylinder stat here. And then this brown wire that's connected to it then goes to a valve. So when you see these black flex cables with brown, orange, blue, gray, and green, yellow wires, those are generally valve cables. And in this case, we've got three of them. So we've got one here, one here, and one up here. This is the one for the hot water system. So essentially when the programmer calls for heat, sends power to here, comes back to the cylinder stat. If the cylinder stat says, yep, we need more hot water, then it sends power through to here. That goes to the, the valve here. The valve opens and allows the flow of water, which then the pump is, has a pressure sensor inside it. So when the valve opens, this, the pump can sense that the valve has opened and the pressure has reduced and therefore the pump starts to work and pump hot water around the system. Then you've got this orange wire, which basically when the, the valve is open, then power comes back down the orange wire and that's like a sort of a switch which tells the other um, things on the system that there is um, this valve, this particular valve is open. So it sounds all quite complicated, but once you kind of get your head around it, it's basically a load of switches. Um, and you've just got to work out which switch is which and what does what, and make sure they're all in the correct order. The other two things we need to figure out are for the heating. And in that case, do you remember at the thermostats on the wall, we had a brown wire as permanent live coming in and then a black wire as switch live coming out. So that is these two wires here, I believe. And again, one of them comes in and then they go out to a valve. 
So basically what happens is when the room thermostat is calling for heat, then it powers up the valve. And in that case, it's one of these zone valves. It opens this zone valve. And then again, the pressure is released. The, water, the pump kicks in and the water starts to flow. The actual pump is wired to this cable. And that's why you've got this switch, switch live here coming back from the zone valves is actually to power up the pump. So all three of the zone valves, if either one of them comes on, it sends power back down these orange wires, which are then linked through this little link here and send power to the pump. And there's also this black wire here, which I'm not sure what that goes to. So I've got to look into that, but um, that sends power down that black wire as well, which is it's probably going back to the programmer downstairs and it's probably not actually in use but yeah that's what that does and then it's exactly the same with the downstairs central heating zone it will activate the downstairs central heating um, zone valve power that on once the valve is open power comes down the orange wire which sends power to the pump the pump activates and the whole system just works so it's fairly simple when you know how. Now these wiring centers, you've got the earth terminals here at the top. So you've got three earth uh, terminals. They just link them together. Again, that's not how it's supposed to be, but that's how they've decided to do it in this case. Then these gray wires are neutrals. So it looks like these are the gray wires for all of the thermostats. The, the programmer and the wall mounted room thermostats, which aren't actually in use, but the main neutrals are all in here. So for the pump, for example, you've got the live and neutral there. So that's giving power to the pump. You've got all the neutrals for the zone valves, which are in here, because the zone valves do need a neutral in order, to, in order to function, obviously. And then you've got the permanent lives here, which go out to the various, um, room thermostats, that's those ones. So you've got three of those. And then these three gray wires are the permanent lives that go to the, um, the zone valves. So basically what happens is when the zone valve is powered up, there's a switch connection which takes place inside the zone valve between the gray and the orange to connect those two together to send power down the orange. So gray is permanent life orange is switch life. Um, so in terms of what I need to do here for the Nest thermostat system, all I need to do actually is mount my two heat links here and then connect them via, I'll usually use five core flex, into this uh, wiring center in the correct terminals, disconnect the wall mounted room thermostat wiring for the downstairs room thermostat, disconnect the wiring for the programmer in the kitchen for the hot water, because that will all go through the Nest thermostat as well, and then reroute the wiring for the wall mounted thermostat in the upstairs bedroom so that it comes through to the Nest thermostat instead of powering it on 230 volts. So I'm going to get my Nest. Here's what I found. I'm going to get my Nest uh, heat links mounted up here with my five core flexes connected in. I'll run the flexes in in the bottom here. There's a little hole which I can use for my two new flex cables, and then I connect everything either into these existing terminals, or I will use Wargo connectors, like little push fit connectors, in here, but in the existing wiring centre. Uh, connection box. So I've removed this programmer now for the hot water and I've taken a photo before I disconnected this but basically what we've got here is permanent live so the permanent live comes from the switch fuse connection unit here in this twin and earth cable and then it just they these two were connected together so that's the permanent live then we had the neutral Again, the neutral coming from the switch fuse connection unit and then going out to the other controller. 
and this is the neutral which goes in the flex to the boiler and then this one was the switch live going out to actually send power to start up the hot water system so what I need to do is basically make, find this at the other end in the wiring center and to do that I use this continuity tester so basically my continuity tester will test if I've got continuity between these two probes so what I can do is just make a temporary um, short circuit between the grey wire and the earth because the, the metal of this back box is connected to earth. I can short the grey wire out to earth and then I can measure at the other end the continuity using this continuity tester. I can measure between grey and the CPC, uh, the circuit protective conductor, which is basically what we call the earth wire. And I should have low continuity reading like that at the other end. And then when I remove this wire and I test again, I should have no uh, continuity between the two. So that's a way to what we call like bell out the wires basically and just check which wire is which. So I'm gonna run up to the other end now and check this to see if it's shorted out to earth. So I'm here at the other end and this is the gray wire that I mentioned earlier which I think is the one from downstairs. So I'm gonna test between that and earth. And there we go, I've got continuity. So I'll go and disconnect that down at the other end now and then check it again. Probably the best thing actually before I do that, just to double check, is to disconnect the live wire from here just to make sure that I'm only measuring that wire and nothing else in the system. So now the, the grey wire is the only wire in there. If I check that again, then I should still get a reading, which I do. So we've got like low resistance. It's only just touching at the other end, so it's not gonna be an accurate reading of the actual resistance of the cable, but it's just to check that there is continuity there basically, which means that that is our, that is our wire. So now if I disconnect this, this end and then do the same test, Upstairs, I should have a high resistance or basically no continuity at all between those two wires on the earth. And there we have no continuity, um, no noise. Test is reading over the limit, so that's fine. So that is the one, which means we can actually um, just disconnect that, it's not going to be used anymore. But the power now from our heat link to power on the central heating system needs to be connected to this wire because this is what it was connected together with. So we need to put that back in that terminal and then make sure that the new outgoing power cable for the hot water from the nest heat link is connected into that particular terminal. And then this wire can just be put in a connector block or cut off as it's not in use at either end. So now we're gonna do exactly the same with the thermostat wires. We're gonna do the same continuity test and I am assuming that it's these two, one for upstairs and one for downstairs. I didn't know, I don't know which one's which because the zone valves are not labeled up. So what I will do while I'm here, once I know which zone valve is which, I will label those up as well, just for future maintenance. It's kind of a good idea to do that. Um, and so we'll start with the upstairs one as it's close and then we'll do the downstairs one. So here we basically, what we're gonna do is just short out the black wire to the earth wire, just by pushing it into that connector block. 
make sure that you've definitely got a connection there. I mean, you can screw it tight to be absolutely sure. I'm just gonna dab it on because um, I'm close by. So now if I test between those black wires and the earth wires, I should get a continuity reading. So we'll test the lower one first. And that is the one, apparently. We'll test the upper one, just to check. There's nothing on the upper one, good. Okay. So again, I will disconnect this, because that is now gonna be connected to the outgoing power for the Nest thermostat itself. I'll leave the flex wire in there because that's gonna be needed to call for heat for upstairs. Um, and I need to remember which one's which, so I need to label this up somehow so that I know that this is the upstairs. Presumably this is the downstairs, but we'll do a test on that just to double check as well. So I've just, I've confirmed that that is the upstairs thermostat cable. Now I've shorted out the downstairs one between the black wire and the green yellow wire. And again, we have continuity on that. So that's good. So I'll just disconnect this one. And I'm gonna put this one down so that I know that this is the downstairs and leave the other one up so that I know that that's the upstairs. Just reconnect terminal 11, which is the switch live for the downstairs heating. So I will just confirm that again now that I've taken it out of the terminal to make sure that there was nothing else going on. Yeah, so it's this downward wire here connected to the green yellow and we do have continuity. Fine. So now that we know one wire, we can find the actual cable that that wire goes into and disconnect all the other wires that are going into that cable. Because for these two thermostats, one of them, we're gonna disconnect the wiring completely. That's the downstairs one. Because it's not gonna be used, there's gonna be a wall thermostat used instead. And the upstairs one, we're going to only use two of the wires in that cable, and we're gonna connect those across to the Nest heat link. So the other cores within that wire so like the gray, for example, is currently connected to the neutral block. We need to get rid of that. Um, we could leave the earth connected. It's always good for the cable to have an earth, even if it's a 12 volt cable. But uh, we do need to connect the brown as well. So we, we can disconnect that from the permanent live terminal. And we can just use the brown and the black as our nest power cables for our 12 volts. And then the cable for the central heating, the, the hot water uh, programmer. Again, we need to do the same. Um, no, actually we need to leave that as it is. Only the gray wire is not gonna be used. So we just blank the gray wire off and everything else will stay the same. Right, so what I've been able to do now is having identified the individual wire that goes to the thermostat, I could then by just kind of tugging on the cable and just digging through here, I could find which cable is which and disconnect all the other wires within that cable that aren't needed. So I've isolated now each of the wall mounted thermostats for the two zones. And I've got the black and the brown wires here ready. So this is for the upstairs one. I'll just twist those together roughly just so that I've got those paired up. So those two are for the upstairs, these two are for the downstairs. The gray one is, is old and not gonna be used anymore. That's the one that went down to the central heating. So I'm gonna just cut the end off that and just twist that up a little bit so that it's just tucked out of the way. Um, then this gray wire as well, all, both of the gray wires from the wall thermostats are not gonna be needed anymore. So what I'm gonna do is just tuck these up here out of the way just twist them up, coil them up a little bit so that they're there if needed in the future. And just tuck them in like that. This gray wire is the only one that's left 
which needs to go back in to the um, terminal because that's the neutral going from downstairs feeding up here to actually from that switch fuse connection unit to feed this whole lot so I need to connect that back into the five terminal and then there's one permanent live conductor here as well um, again that's the incoming permanent live so that needs to stay connected now normally just so you know a gray wire should be identified as with some blue sleeving if it's used as a neutral because neutral color is blue not gray so that wire should have been identified with some blue sleeving when it's first put in so i'm just going to get a little bit of blue sleeving and put it over that and then everyone knows that it's a neutral wire and the same with the black ones when they're used as as 230 volts live they should really be sleeved with brown sleeving so that everyone knows that they are mains voltage uh, live conductors same with these well yeah i'm not sure about the motorized valve ones really i suppose technically they should be sleeved up as well really so i'm just going to take a moment to show you what's in the box so you've got this little tab on the side here you just tear that just like a security tab and then the box lid just pulls off you've got the actual thermostat itself here with a little protective cover instruction booklet and then this is what we call the nest heat link which is basically the sort of relay box that does all the switching so this is our main connections are going to go here these are the things that are going to be mounted next to the um, wiring center and then this is the mounting base for the nest thermostat itself comes with four fixing screws and these are really good quality stainless steel fixing screws and they don't need raw plugs so they're quite good to, to be able to use those it's quite rare actually to have a company who provides good fixing screws this is a wall plate so that if there's a larger thermostat that you've removed and you want to just neatly cover it up without having to make good you can put that behind the wall mounted thermostat just to cover up any damage and that's it so i'm going to get these heat links now mounted up to the wall i'll just undo the cover here uh, a good thing to note when you're doing a two zone system is it's a good idea to write on the back or put a label saying which zone is which because you can't they're not interchangeable so this nest thermostat is paired to this uh, heat link and you can't get them the wrong way around if you if you do you'll end up controlling the upstairs heating from the downstairs thermostat and vice versa and it will just be confusing so these two are paired together you need to basically put them in the right place and you need to know which one's which so i usually just put a label on the back saying what's what and then you don't get confused there's just this little um, screw here just to hold the cover in place and you don't remove it completely you just take it out a little bit and then the whole cover levers off and then here's the wiring connections there's a connection diagram here so you know which wires need to go into which terminals and basically it's your incoming live and neutral then these three terminals are for your central heating these three are for your hot water then if you've got an open therm system you've got two terminals for that and then t1 and t2 are your 12 volt terminals for your thermostat wiring which goes to the actual um, nest thermostat base here because it's powered by 12 volts not 230 volts so you need to be careful about that never power this up from mains voltage otherwise it will just blow it up so i'm going to use a five core flex i'm going to use live and neutral with two of the cores um, then i'm going to use um, link across from the permanent live to the terminal number two which is the common terminal and then go out with the switch live from terminal number three for the central heating and then i'm going to use these two two cores of these to go to the thermostat one of these the upstairs one i'm going to wire in with the hot water terminals as well so i will need actually seven cores for that one so i'll probably have to run in a an extra three core flex just to do the uh, extra two cores that are needed for the central heating 
uh, or maybe I'll use this three core flex for the main supply and then use the other cores for the various outgoing wires. All right, so just use my brother label maker just to print out a couple of labels. So I'm gonna do one here for the ground floor. Then the other one here, I'm gonna label up as first floor and hot water. So obviously you only need one of the thermostats to control the hot water um, because it's just a, a set of, of contactors. Um, so this one will be the first floor on hot water. And that just saves me from getting them confused and I know which one's which. <sighs> this is like an electrician's worst nightmare. <laughs> that is so annoying, so annoying. You know, like that's gonna take me forever to put those all back into the right place. It almost makes me wanna just throw the whole box away and just buy a new box because the time it takes to sort that out is just a nightmare. So now what we can do is mount this first heat link onto the wall using the screws provided by Nest. This level is a bit over the top, but you get the idea. Okay, so now we've got that mounted, you can just measure off the flex cable and cut it to length so we know how much we need. So I usually allow enough to go to the furthest part of the box and just a little loop underneath, that's about right. So we'll cut that there. And then I'm gonna mount the other, do the connections on the other one first and then connect everything in together into the wiring sense center. Right, so we're gonna start connecting these flexes now into our wiring center. So we're gonna start with the ground floor and hot water one. Just strip this flex back. And then I'm gonna use this existing hole that's underneath here just to bring those cables in. So for this one, got a green yellow which is our ass connection then we've got permanent live brown neutral blue switch live black sleeved and then switch line for the hot water gray sleeved before you put the ferrules on it's important to put the sleeving on because the sleeving won't fit over the ferrules usually so that's just an important little tip and I usually try to leave the wire a little bit longer than the ferrules on these because the terminals here are quite deep so it just gives you a bit extra length because these ferrules are actually quite um, short and sometimes if they're not long enough you don't get a good connection on them. And then we'll start with the earth wire. See if we can find space. These are a bit tight, to be honest. Um, but that one looks like it's got enough space, so I'll get it in there. Just loosen the terminal until you've got enough of a gap to start getting it in, and there we go. And just wiggle it to work its way in. And then once it's in half, just tighten that up, like so. Then, Permanent, live, and neutral. So we'll do the neutral first. And uh, we can use this gray, the terminal that the gray conductor is into. And while we've got the gray conductor out, I'm just gonna put a bit of blue sleeving over that so that that identifies it as a neutral conductor. Put that back in. And then put the neutral in there as well. Now I'm not going to tighten that up yet because we've got the uh, other neutral conductor to do in there as well. So I will need to add the other neutral conductor from the other thermostat into there. Same with the lives. 
permanent lives. We can use this terminal here. Put the permanent live in there. But again, we've got another one to connect in there, so I won't connect that in yet. Now, the hot water is the gray. So that was this lower terminal here. So we'll loosen that up and then connect that in there. Like that. And then the ground floor central heating was this one, number 11. Make sure they're nice and tight and give them a little tug afterwards to make sure that they're not gonna come out. Um, now, what I wanted to do as well is just trace these motorized valves so that I know which one's which. So this is the ground floor one, which is this flex cable here. So if I trace that around, it's the left-hand side valve. So I'm just gonna label that up now. Label up first floor and ground floor. And then we know which one's which for future maintenance. Okay, so that's those valves labeled. Right, so now this next flex cable, which will go in here, and there's just enough room. Usually these long nose pliers come in quite handy. I can just use them to grab onto the cable, pull that through, and that's about right. The grey and the green yellow wires now are actually going to be used as our signal wires for the 12 volts for the thermostat. And then we'll put our. Probably need to open up these terminals a little bit more so that there's room for all three wires. I don't particularly like screw fit terminals to be honest, I prefer push fit ones, but. I'm not going to change the whole wiring centre just because I'm fitting a Nesk controller. It's important to get the wires all in properly into the terminals. Make sure there's no exposed copper showing. And there we go. And give those a, a little pull and they're all fine and in properly. That's good. It's the same with the lives. And then we've got the switch live here, which will go into number 13. And then these are our signal wires for our 12 volts. So if you remember, the ones that I pointed down as the ground floor, and actually they've been disconnected completely. So we can just cut those off, just tuck those out of the way. And then these two are our um, signal wires that go to our upstairs thermostat position. So what I'm gonna do with those is just put them in Wargo connectors to know which one's which. So we've got the black with the green yellow and the gray with the brown. So once all the wires are connected like that, it's important to just try and make sure everything's as neat as possible in the wiring center. Obviously it's not easy because there's a lot of wires in there, but these Wargo connectors, for example, can just tuck those back in, make sure the wires are tucked in correctly. Make sure that none of the wires are pulled out of the terminals or anything, but that looks fine. And then I'm just gonna put the lid back on so that I can power it up safely. I uh, don't think there's any particular orientation on this. It can go either way. So, wiring center cover is on. I'll get the covers on these and just click those on uh, gently, and then I'll connect the thermostat at the other end. Just a little tip for you with these lids. There's no point to label these lids themselves because they can be swapped around and then that can confuse your labeling system. So just label the actual base, don't label the lid, because otherwise someone could swap them over and then 
mix, mix it all up. So I'm just gonna tap those on gently. I'm not gonna screw them down yet because I've got the connections to do at the other end. And then I just wanna test everything and make sure it's all working properly before I finally close all the covers and everything. So I'm just gonna wall mount the thermostat up here in the bedroom now. And to do that, we're gonna be using the brown and black wires, the green, yellow, and um, gray wires are not gonna be used. So this is what they did before. I'm just gonna do the same. Just gonna tuck those inside the wall because there's not much room inside the actual um, nest base, unfortunately. So you can't really fit any connectors in. So it goes like that, and then you've got T1 and T2, which are your two wires. Um, so my black was connected to T1, so I'm gonna just do the same. And the brown to T2. So T1 and T2 refer to the terminals in the nest heat link. And it's got a little level in here, which is quite handy so that you can get it level. So what I usually do is get one screw. I think I'm gonna just remove these old plasterboard fixings because he's gonna to wanna to fill in after this. So I usually get it roughly level like that and then get one fixing on the side. The good thing about these is they've got a little bit of play on them. So if you don't get the screws exactly level, it doesn't matter too much because the holes here are sort of adjustable. Obviously, whenever you're fixing something, you should always make sure that there are no wires behind or anything like that. And then we'll get it level like so. And put my second screw in there. Then make any minor adjustments that are needed in order to get it level. That's about right. So before we put the cover on this, we will do a voltage test here so that we make sure that everything's safe voltage wise. We'll turn the system on at the other end and then just do a voltage test here to make sure we've got 12 volts. So that if for some reason we had made a mistake and there was 230 volts here, at least we're not gonna put the cover on and blow the Nest thermostat up. So I've turned the Nest system on now, the central heating system on, and I'm just gonna do a voltage test here Obviously it's DC voltage, so we should be measuring 12 volts DC. And that's what we've got, 11.8, that's absolutely fine. So that's safe now to put the actual Nest thermostat cover on. And these are very easy to fit, they literally just click on like that. So it takes a, a little few seconds to sort of initialize and power up once the screen comes on. You can see it flashing green there to say that it's got power and it's sending out a signal. The actual 12 volts that comes in the back is not just um, power, but it's also communication. So if you do have one of these where it's quite far from the heat link, you can, instead of having it on the stand, if you connect it wired, then it will send the signal over the wires, which is quite handy. So this dial just turns like so, and then you just push the screen in to select. You can push in pretty much anywhere. Um, internet connection, I'm gonna have to skip that at the moment because I don't think there's actually any internet in the property yet. Actually, I'm gonna just check that. There's no internet in the property at the moment. So I'll skip that location. So we're in Europe, United Kingdom, and I'll skip the postcode for data protection purposes. So there's a step to enter your Nest Pro ID. Um, so I can just do that with mine, and then um, it will put my company contact details on here for the customer if they have any problems in the future. So it says the heat link is now connected wired and wirelessly. So you see it does detect the wired connection. We can connect. 
system is a combi boiler control for the heating is on off gas radiators that's fine obviously you've got options like oil um, control options could be open therm uh, get source could be electric propane geothermal pellets gas or oil yeah so we select gas and then delivery can be radiators or underfloor heating basically and so combi boiler heat with on off continue temperature so you can save energy by using the eco temperature when nobody's at home or turn them to manually at any time basically the standard eco temperature is what i usually choose which is nine degrees c so and then the nest app so the customer will have to set up a nest um, nest home account and then they can connect their app to this thermostat so that they can tr control it from their phone however the customer is not here at the moment so we'll do that later so i'll skip that step now um, and basically it just learns your behavior as you go along over time so you're supposed to just turn it up when you're too cold turn it down when you're too hot and after a while it'll automatically make a schedule for you so this is the current setting of the temperature so it's set to 20 this is the room temperature it's currently 22 in the room so if i turn it up above the current room temperature it will glow orange and it'll start to call the boiler for heat so i should hear the boiler kicking in so now that the thermostat is activated you can see the pump has kicked in you can hear the water flowing around the circuit and that first floor valve, which I've labelled up there, is the one that will have opened to allow hot water to flow through to the radiators on the first floor. So that all seems to be working fine. What I'll do is disactivate the thermostat now and this should all click off. So when I turn it down below the current room temperature, then it clicks off and I can hear everything shut down in this cupboard. So there you can see the pump has now gone off, the valves have closed and the boiler has shut down. So that means that one's working. Now there is another way to test these, which is using this button. So if I press the button there, it will automatically turn on. And we should see the pump start to kick in. There we go. We can hear the valve opening. And the boiler will fire up and start producing hot water and then if i press the button again you can hear that valve closing and everything's turning off the green light is indicating that it's been paired with the thermostat so this blue one here that's the ground floor and hot water ones i've not paired that up yet i'm going to do those ones next so we've got our nest stand here now obviously this comes separately to the actual nest thermostat this is an additional product that you have to buy separately and uh, so it's important that you know that if you do want your nest thermostats to be on a stand and not wall mounted you need to get the stand which is about 30 quid extra i think and it comes with a power cable as well which is very important so this is the power cable let's unwrap that like so the power cable is a usb a micro usb like that you can see uh, and you thread that through and then it plugs in to the back of the nest thermostat uh, no it doesn't sorry i lie you need the base yeah this base is what you need uh, so this is the base that comes with the nest thermostat itself and the power cable connects in here so what you have to do is thread the power cable through here then plug it in to the back of this and make sure you get it the right way around otherwise it won't fit in properly that just clicks in and then the cable pushes in like that so that it stays flat then you thread that back down and that base just mounts in there snugly and then in the case you're very careful don't lose these 
you need these two little screws. So the two screws there go either side to actually connect the nest thermostat base to the stand. There we go, they just screw in a tiny bit. Then the cable itself clicks into that little um, gap at the bottom. And then the thermostat just clicks in just as it did on the wall mounting option. Just got to get it aligned properly. There we go, and that just clicks in like that. This label, by the way, is supposed to be peeled off. That does have like a PIR sensor inside so that it detects movement. And if you walk up to it at night, it will light up and stuff like that. So then we've got the power supply. That USB cable just plugs in like that to the power supply. Power supply plugs into the wall. And then turn that on. And we'll zoom in and have a look at the screen. There we go. So we want English UK because we are Brits and we speak posh like. And then we have no internet connection at the moment, so we're going to skip that location. No, I'm not in China or Russia. Europe. There we go. United Kingdom. So we have a single family installation here. Basically one family living in the house. If there was multiple families, you can select that. Or if it's an apartment or flat or a business, you've got all those options. And this one is gonna be in the living room. I'm in the kitchen at the moment, but it is gonna be in the living room finally. So I'll select living room. And then I just select the date and time, which is May the 29th in 2020. And it is now 11.22. These um, fields don't need to be filled in if you connect it to the internet because it will get the time automatically off the internet, just so you know. And there we go, it says heat link connected wirelessly. Obviously there's no wired connection in this case, but that's fine. So again, we just skip through those. That's all fine with the default settings. And then we do need to make sure that the water is set up as well. So we'll do the eco temperatures. Okay, I think I need to go back to equipment actually to do the water. Yeah, there we go. And then hot water, it gives me the option. If you choose combi boiler, then it doesn't. Yeah, actually it's not a combi boiler then, is it? Because we've got a hot water tank. So combi boiler is when you turn the hot water tap on and straight away the boiler kicks in and it just gives you current water. Uh, so hot water control on off, that's fine. The other option is not connected. Here we go. So again, I'll run through the same setup. It's set to 20 degrees at the moment. Um, we want to just turn it up above the desired temperature. And as I'm next to the boiler here, you should be able to hear the boiler kick in. That's it, so that's fired up. So if we just turn that back down now, we should hear the boiler come off. shuts down straight away which is great and then we need to test the hot water as well so sometimes the hot water won't actually work depending on how much hot water there is in the tank already um, at the moment it's set to be off until 5 p.m. anyway the hot water schedule is automatically programmed into this as a sort of a standard one that comes on at like 6 in the morning till 8 and then go, goes on again at 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. something like that but you can change that if you want to in the app or using the schedule here. But to do a boost, just to test it, you just press it, turn it to however long you want to boost for, which in my case, I just want a half an hour boost. And then that turns the hot water system on. But as I say, depending on the, the um, setup of the thermostat, the tank thermostat, it might not actually kick in. Seems like it's not going to just because of the fact that there's enough hot water in the tank already. So I'm gonna do a manual test on that just by turning up the tank thermostat, just to get the system to kick in and make sure the power's getting through okay. The tank thermostat is behind this cover, and obviously you should disconnect this from the mains before, before you actually take the cover off. So I can hear that kicking in now, so I know that the hot water system is working okay.
And if I turn that down, that will click off. So this is just controlling the temperature of the hot water within the tank. So again, I can do a manual check just on this by pressing that button and that's all kicking in fine. And if I press the button again, that'll turn off after a few seconds. There we go, so it's all good. So now I just need to fix these covers back properly and then we're all done. So with the old cable here downstairs, I've just cut that off and tucked it inside. I tested first to make sure it was definitely dead and, and completely disconnected from the other end. Uh, so the customer can just make good this now and that'll be as good as new. One thing though I must say is that what I usually do is leave these old ones with the customer because you never know if, for example, in a couple of years time they want to move house and they want to take their Nest smart thermostats with them, they might want to reinstate this. So it's just a little thing that's worth thinking about. Always leave them on site just in case. Don't just throw them in the bin or something. So there we go, all smartened up. This house is now ready to go as a smart home with their smart heating system. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. Are you a person who is looking to install one of these yourself? Are you an electrician who's looking to learn how to install these for yourself? I'd love to know. And if you enjoyed this video, hit a thumbs up and don't forget to share it out with someone else who could benefit from it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.